Yo, what's up guys, you're Dink here. This video is all about my EVO experience. Uh, some of my viewers wanted me to make a little video recapping what happened at EVO, my thoughts on EVO, the whole thing. Um, so I just wanted to make a video where I talk about that, if you guys care about my opinion and any of that kind of stuff at all. Here it is. Woo! So I'll start with the actual tournament first, tournament results and stuff. I had a feeling that Tekken Master would do well in EVO, but I had no idea he would do that well. That guy is a machine. The reads that he made, the character switches that he made at like the perfect times, I feel like at at the very end of that set against Sonic Fox, he really had no choice but to go with Blood God. I thought that was a perfect choice for Aaron Black, but you know, then you that's where counterpicking kind of rears its ugly head because then he got the final counterpick, which was Alien. And then, you know, kind of just went from there. He might have been able to pull it off with uh, War God. You know, he was playing solid. He was making some good reads. Um, and if he would have got that last game, then, you know, I think Evo would have been his. But, um, you know, it's... The, you can't stop the Fox, I guess. He probably would have found a way regardless to make it. Michelangelo making top 8. That's super hype. Especially beating Scar in one of the, the worst matchups in the game. Um... In Demolition Sonya with that freaking sky drop, man. Oh, he's so godlike, dude. I've got so much inspiration from watching him play and stuff. Um, it's really incredible. I, I feel like some days, you know, I play on the same level as him, and then I actually watch him play, and I'm like, man, what is he doing differently than me? That's crazy. He's so good. And uh, he's one of the main reasons that I started using interactables, you know, the same way that I do. Um, so big ups to him. Big D. A guy that I've known for a very long time, uh, making it, what, top four, I think? Uh, top five? With Mystic, showing that Ermac can compete. Showing that Ermac is indeed maybe in the conversation for top ten. Definitely one of the best moves in the game. He played super solid as well. Um, I believe he eliminated Hayate, and well, I think he also eliminated Michelangelo, too. So, definitely good competition there. And and the pools and everything were super hype. We had a Boraicho in top 32. Shouts to... Uh, Pretty Flocko 92, I think. Uh, or Illmatic, I think he went by in uh, Evo. And, uh, yeah, it was it was a crazy event competition-wise. Everybody was there. The UK was there. We had, uh, you know, Tech Master from, what was it, Baron? Sorry if I mispronounced that. I, I, I had never heard of it before I heard from him. Um, you know, top players from Canada, Honeybee, Biohazard. Biohazard almost making top eight. He was so disappointed, I felt so bad. My heart just broke when I saw him just barely miss the top eight. He wanted that so bad. Um, but he did lose to Michelangelo, so I was kind of like, yay! Oh, woo! Oh. So now shifting to the actual EVO event, how everything was scheduled. Um, pools ran late, which kind of sucked. They were like 15 to 20 minutes late for each pool, for MK anyways. I can't comment on the other games. This is strictly MK. It's the only game I played. So they were strictly like they ran about 15 20 minutes late. The top 32, I think, or top 64 ran like half an hour late. They couldn't find all the brackets or something. Um, so I felt that to be a little bit weird. The seating was awful. Unless you were playing a tournament match, you, there was no chairs anywhere. Well, for our stream setup for the top 64, I think there was maybe like four chairs or something like that, and all, all the chairs kept getting stolen. So if you wanted to watch, you had to be like, hope you were really tall, or like, stand on someone's shoulders or something, or just butt your way through to the front on one little monitor. It was it was really ridiculous. Um, and the same thing for the pool stream, you know, if you watch that, going back, there were no chairs over there either. There was like three sets of chairs for like the three people that were in line to play on stream, and that was it. There wasn't any uh, any seating for any sort of audience. There wasn't a projector screen we could watch it on. It, it was really. I'm, it looked, when I went back and watched the uh, the stream archive, it looked like a really good, you know, viewing experience for, like, the viewer from home. But being there, it was just awful. I couldn't get, like, a good view. I was trying to look between people's shoulders. It was, it was bad. And then, of course, they bumped, you know, MKXL to 8 a.m. on freaking Sunday. Because, like, you know, people want to go out and party and stuff. And then you're going to wake up at 8 a.m. to go play Top 8. And not to mention that the finals, the qualifying match, was the last one I think was at like 11.30. So even by the time you get back to your hotel room, you only get like six hours of sleep. That's 
you know, it's not enough to compete for top eight. Like, I need my eight hours of sleep. I'm a baby. <laughs> if I don't get that, then I don't know. But the, the way the NRS is treated as a whole is just, I was super unimpressed. And I hope that they uh, get some good feedback about that and they make some changes for next year. Because uh, the Evos before was really good. Um, oh, that was another thing I was going to mention. They didn't have a whole lot of vendors this year. Usually they have a ton of vendors. I had a hard time. I just wanted to buy a backpack. And I went to like pretty much everyone there and I had to go to like Gaming Generations. Uh, which is like kind of like the last place that I would look for one. I, you know, I went to like sp Split Frame. The lineup was like out the freaking all the way around the venue. Went to the actual Evo booth, lamp was all the way around the venue, and then all, none of the other vendors sold anything like that. It was all artwork and stuff. So I was a little perturbed by that, that they didn't have a vendor thing there. But I ended up finding my backpack. It was super expensive, and I regret buying it, but I got it, again, I guess, eventually. So I hope the next year they go uh, they go back to like their kind of old, smaller ways, but I don't really see that happening, because they made a huge impact with getting on ESPN this year. Uh, you know, making the big leap for esports, which is good. Good as a whole, it kind of makes our builds our brand and brings us a little bit closer to what the goal always has been was to reach out to more people and get more people to play. And now, you know, we're, we're finally making that a reality, so that's good. I just, uh, I just hope they don't lose sight of the grassroots feeling that they've had for the last few years. That at least I've been there, and of course, the last decade before. Evo aside, I did want to do um, one little discussion about a gameplay mechanic. That, uh, that I think is really important. I hear lots of people talk about it all the time. Well, that's bad matchups. People say, oh, this is a bad matchup. This is a bad matchup. This is a bad matchup. Um, and nobody likes playing bad matchups. It sucks. But learning the bad matchup can uh, sometimes shift it into a good matchup, if not for the character, for the players. Um, I've beat several Swarm Queen Devoras, I've beat several Piercing Molinas, I've beat, you know, several Takedas um, as Quan Chi because I know the matchup better than they know the matchup. They don't 100% know how to deal with my stuff, and they don't 100% know how to keep my character in the distance that they need to keep it. Um, so, just because it's a bad matchup does not by any means means it's an unwinnable matchup. In my opinion, there are no unwinnable matchups in this game. I believe there's a few 7-3s. Uh, Demolition Sonia for one is a 7-3. Um, I don't think Imposter Shinnok is a 7-3, but I might not argue it if it was. Um, but just things like that, and of course for the characters that you play, you know, you have a whole different matchup chart as well. But uh, especially in tournament, when it's first to three, you only get three games, you know, that 7-3, you still have that three matches there. And as long as you play the way that you play, you know, you saw it with Michelangelo last weekend, you know, beating Demolition Sonya with Summoner. So it's, uh, you know, just being a good player, knowing the matchup, and knowing it better than your opponent is, knows the matchup is, uh, is super important. And, uh... You know, if, if it's a bad matchup, like a 6-4, or maybe just like a hard 5-5, five, five, you know, that's just learn that matchup, because that's not that's not a hard matchup at all. 6-4 is should not be a hard matchup for anybody, you know. There's still tons of games for you to win. Each game is close. And uh, if you're playing these matchups, and, you know, you get a round or something, you know, like, just look at, like, the actual games when you're practicing them, and seeing how close you're actually getting to, uh... To, to winning the match, you know, don't let the score always dictate how well you think you're doing. If you lost five to one, but every single match was like last hit, last round, that's really good, you know. You, maybe you just need to work a little bit on uh, your clutch factor, you know, you're doing the right move at the right time to end the game. That's a that's a big thing to work on. But uh, don't beat yourself up if you're if the games are close, but you're still not really getting the end of it. Um, in tournament, that matters, but that's when you have to you know pick out these little things and refine them. Uh, but, but when you're practicing, always practice your bad matchups. You know, you don't really want to spend too much time on a good matchup. I mean, of course, all matchups are important, but there's like 90-some-odd matchups in this game, and it makes it really hard to uh, to really learn them all intricately. You know, like Warlock and Volato, for example. I, you know, I know that matchup well enough by you know playing a couple sets to know exactly what to do, why he wins, why he loses. 
and then of course you know demo Sony there's a billion demo Sony's so I'll always try and play a good demo Sony's just to see if I can figure some other stuff out even if I lose a bunch of games like you guys saw me the other week but uh, you know just play your bad matchups because yeah you know you'll you'll train them and hopefully you'll know them better than your opponent will in tournament and then you can get the win and that's enough of my rambling for today guys thank you so much for listening to me um, I feel like I do these a lot uh, but I really do like talking to you and getting away from the gameplay and kind of talking to you on like a personal level and giving my advice and my experience and stuff uh, to you guys um, for whatever it's worth. So I really appreciate that. And of course, hashtag Bonehawks and all that stuff. And we'll see all you guys in the next video.